The University of Texas at Arlington is a flourishing campus in a quickly growing city of the same name, Arlington, Texas. Founded in 1895, the school has gone through a number of names and has a very long and rich history, often characterized by the kind of buildings on campus. There is no single style, with many of the buildings that make up the main campus being from different time periods themselves. Preston Hall, for example, was opened in 1928, back when the school was known as North Texas Agricultural College, and features a roundhouse that originally housed livestock. It later became the campus's first planetarium. Unfortunately, that history is under attack. This is President Kabari, UTA's leader, or should I say former leader. You see, March has been a very busy month for him. So much so that keeping track of the saga has become very difficult for me to do on my own. I'll summarize it. He actually announced his resignation this month, saying it was time to take stock and focus on moving forward. This exit isn't as grateful as it sounds, however. It comes on the heels of an investigation that revealed the school essentially partnered with an OPM to boost enrollment and admission online at the cost of academic standards. In layman's terms, they enrolled people into the nursing program, even if they may not have been qualified, for profit. He's also facing a lawsuit, alleging he bullied and unfairly fired multiple lower-ranking women. Earlier, it was discovered he was a candidate for presidency at the University of Central Florida, which he promptly stepped down from. And finally, on the heels of school cancellation by the COVID crisis, he announced to move his resignation from August to immediately. Now, there's a lot to cover in the Kabari story. However, that's not the focus of this video. All while these controversies swirled, another silent war was being fought in the background that very few people paid attention to. The war on UTA's historic landscape. Exhibit A is Brazos House, an 82-year-old dorm building that was originally constructed to be military barracks back when UTA was a military school. You might not have ever known, but it was actually built under the New Deal. And aside from being the second oldest building on campus, it was also home to one of UTA's largest and strongest communities. Residents of this dorm had a very strong and uncanny relationship with each other, bonding over yearly traditions like the Bra Bridge, when they would hang pink bras across the trees to celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month. A lot of friendships were formed, and even some love stories. That's right, residents from this dorm got married. So, when UTA announced, seemingly out of the blue, that that summer, 2018, the dorm was going to be torn down, there was a lot of backlash. Despite droves of comments, and even a petition to save the building, away it went. Wow. Demolition continued as planned, and to appease the upset alumni, they decided to sell off parts of the building charging up to a thousand dollars for the nameplate. Hmm. After the dorm's demolition, it was announced that a park would take its place. However, even that project was delayed, and when it was finally finished, it became more of an empty field or pavilion. Where the tall building once stood, now lies a small stage, constructed of a lot of parts of the original building. If you look closely at the original doorways, you can still see decades of students' names and symbols etched into them. My name is Charles Salazar, I go to school at UTA, I'm a political science major, and I work at the Shorthorn. Sometimes it's necessary to tear down old buildings, like if they're super, super out of date, but I believe UTA has gone a bit too far. Brazos House, with all of its issues, could have been saved or at least preserved in a better way than Brazos Park, which at the moment is just a stage and is kind of a bad looking pavilion. Now late into the following year, 2019, an undisclosed project began on another dorm, Trinity House. Seemingly to avoid similar backlash from the community, UTA operated on it without a peep. After remaining in place for a couple months, demolition suddenly began and the building was raised. However, some official documentation from a bid entry online alludes to different plans. It seems like the building was originally going to be remodeled and repurposed. The entire facade would be redesigned and it would become a faculty building. Somewhere along the line, seemingly plans changed and instead it was torn down. Now, I've actually got a history with this dorm. Not only did my uncle stay there when he attended this college and I spent some time visiting friends there, but I also worked on a project for it with the UTA housing department. During early 2019, there was a new program being offered called the Grad Special. Essentially focused towards international students, the plan affordably housed them in the Trinity House with an extensively remodeled fourth floor common room. They turned it into sort of a big community kitchen, something I produced an ad about for the program, and was told was not cheap. The best part of staying in Grad Housing, I say the people. Like for example, whenever I come to the kitchen, I always meet somebody. 
Now, why UTA would invest money in extensively remodeling a building and then tear it down within the same year, we may never know. But very quickly after, the school shifted its focus to another historic building, the Social Work Building. Now, dating back to the 1920s and actually being the original Arlington High School, the Social Work Building is a big piece of Arlington's history. In fact, it's one of the only historic landmarks left here. When the new Arlington High was built, the city sold it to UTA and it became the Social Work Building. It's pretty much sat in place ever since. But on February 14th, 2019, President Kabari spoke to the 86th Texas Legislature in regards to funds for a new facility. He stated that the old building was failing and that students would have to be moved out very shortly, going so far as to saying, it is highly likely that the building will fall down. That was over a year ago. Up until this recent crisis, students have still been going to classes as normal. Apparently none of the students have been alerted that it's highly likely to fall down. In fact, there hasn't been much mention of it since, except at a recent Pizza with the President meeting where my friend Charles questioned him about it. When asked why students were still attending classes in the building, he said it was safe and that it may be operable three or four more years before a problem arises. This is the crux of the matter. The most excusable demolition may be Brazos. But the other two buildings tell a different story. Trinity House, which wasn't even intended to be torn down, is gone. The reason for tearing down our social work building, nobody really knows. Our president is telling us two different stories. I guess I should say former president. Trinity House was completely fine. It was just renovated and there was no reason to tear it down. And the social work building, while it does have some issues, can still be saved. It opens up the question, what are these demolitions really for? Is it for the good of the students and faculty? Or is it for the school's image? If the social work building was really unsafe, we would have heard about it and we wouldn't be offering classes inside of it. If it's safe, then that means Kabari is embellishing the story. Either way, he's not telling the truth. At the same time as this, UTA has demolished apartments to create a big grand entrance to the university center and built a fancy new research building at the corner of campus causing a major shift in parking and parking prices. When you put all of these together, it paints a bigger picture. I feel like the UTA school board or definitely President Kabari just don't want these old building buildings clogging up the view of the street of the newer buildings like the ERB or the SARE. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Kabari has had another school in mind for a long time. Remember, we found out that he was a candidate for presidency. Not that he was applying, but that he was already almost there. Has he been using his time here to preserve history and make things nicer for students and faculty? Or has he used it to make the campus shiny and new, possibly to catch another school's attention? I think the school probably sees the social work building as an eyesore, which is corroborated by the fact they're not even going to put a new building on the same site. They're instead going to move it in front of KC Hall. Side note, I'm sure that's gonna be a great sound and sight for the people living on that side of the building, as I once did. The new location will also cram in a smart hospital, taking more focus away from social work and fueling student sentiments that underneath Kabari, the school's main focus has become STEM at the cost of other programs. Either way, UTA is facing a major shift in leadership and hopefully a shift in culture as well. A college campus is supposed to be steeped in the history of the town around it and the U.S. as a, as a whole. And tearing down these buildings is a horrible thing to do to that view. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this story and you'd like to hear a little bit more about Kabari on his own, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Thank you.